Hello, in this video we are going to continue looking at the rules of inference which are valid argument forms. In the previous video we looked at conjunction and simplification which make use of the ampersand to represent and, and we looked at disjunctive syllogism and addition which make use of the wedge shape to represent or. And in this video we're going to be looking at modus ponens, modus tollens, and hypothetical syllogism which all use the horseshoe shape to, rep to represent if then. But before we get on to that, let's recap what we learned from the previous video. An argument is valid when its conclusion necessarily follows from its premises. An argument is formally valid when its form guarantees that its conclusion necessarily follows from its premises. If any argument has the same form as a formally valid argument, it too is valid. The rules of inference are forms of formally valid arguments. Propositions are what we ascribe truth or falsity to. Propositions are expressed through sentences, but propositions are the meanings of sentences, not our thoughts, ideas, or expressions of them. Questions, exclamations, and commands do not express propositions. Propositions are not concrete things. They are abstract like numbers, existing just as independently from our minds and our expressions of them as numbers do. Although propositions are true or false, the truth value of a proposition may remain unknown. Propositions themselves are eternally true or false when the same sentence seems to have different truth values in different contexts. It is actually expressing different propositions. Okay, in the previous video we learned about conjunction and simplification. Conjunction allows us to infer a conjunction of two statements given as separate premises. Simplification allows us to infer the conjunct of a conjunction. We also learned about addition and disjunctive syllogism. Addition allows us to infer a disjunction from a single premise. It is the disjunction of that premise with another um, proposition. And with disjunctive syllogism, we have the disjunction of two propositions. We deny one of them, and so we're able to infer the other one. If one is false, the other one must be true. And now we move on to material conditionals. And note that the use of the term material here, we're not talking strictly about conditionals, but, but a specific kind of conditional that we use in logic. Okay, we have two rules concerning the material conditionals here. One is modus ponens, which is Latin for mode of affirming. The other is modus tollens, which is Latin for mode of denying. And in modus ponens, we are going to be affirming the antecedent. I should say the first part of a conditional is called the antecedent, and the second part is the consequent. So here P is the antecedent, Q is the consequent. And so we have if P, then Q, and we affirm P. And since this tells us that if P is true, then Q is true, we can infer that Q is true. If we go over here, we again have the premise if P then Q, but this time we are denying Q, and we are inferring not P. Okay, let's see how this works with the truth table here. Note that if P then Q is false whenever P is true and Q is false. In fact, if P then Q means the denial of P and not Q. And otherwise, it is true. So for, let's look at how each of these work with the truth table. If P then Q is true, so here, here, or here, P is true. Well, this is the only place where P is true in the truth table where the whole statement is true. And so we look up the truth value of Q, that's true. Or we go here, again, it's going to be this, this, or this, and we say Q is false. Well, this is the only place that Q is false, where the whole conditional is true. In that instance, P is also false. So 
So the truth table here is showing us that modus ponens and modus tollens are both valid forms of argument. Now let's look at some examples of each of these. Here we have an example of modus ponens. If God wrote the Bible, then it is entirely true. God wrote the Bible, therefore the Bible is entirely true. And here's an example of modus tollens. It's using the same conditional as the other one. If God wrote the Bible, then it is entirely true. Next premise is, the Bible is not entirely true. Therefore, God did not write the Bible. And these two examples illustrate um, an expression that's commonly used by philosophers. One man's modus ponens is another's modus tollens. And the idea that this gets across is that it's not enough just to have a valid argument form. You also have to put in the correct premises. And in this case, the correct premise is the Bible is not entirely true because, in fact, the Bible does contain contradictions. And anything with contradictions is not entirely true. So, we can infer God did not write the Bible. Though, of course, there are plenty of people who are making this argument. But they have, they're mistaken about this premise. Now, I should note here that these are generally valid argument forms. Uh, Q, therefore, if P, then Q. Also, not P, therefore, if P, then Q. And this might seem strange, but what I, what I want to point out here is that the material conditional does not express any causation or connection between the antecedent and consequent. And it does not perfectly express what is meant by if then. But this is an advanced uh, subject, and I won't go into this in further detail in this video. But just bear in mind that for most conditionals, um, expressing it in this way will work. If we're talking about conditionals of, say, one proposition, if one proposition, then another proposition. However, there are some conditionals which will not be expressed well with this, but that's an advanced topic. and. Let's not get sidetracked by discussing it here. Okay, now we move on to hypothetical syllogism. And this goes, if P then Q, if Q then R, therefore, if P then R. Uh, for example, if Polly is a parrot, then Polly is a bird. If Polly is a bird, then Polly is an animal. Therefore, if Polly is a parrot, then Polly is an animal. And this rule of inference is illustrating the transitive property of the conditional. You can have any number of conditionals, and if they're of, and if each one is linked to the previous one, say where the antecedent of one is the consequent of the previous one, like in this, then when you string them all together, you can infer a conditional where the antecedent is the antecedent of the first statement of the first of your first conditional and the consequent is the consequent of your last conditional and you'll have a valid argument. So let's now look at the truth table for hypothetical syllogism. Okay. And there's some problem showing this. Let's try to stretch that out. Okay, I paused momentarily and stretched this out. Uh, it has some problem with the horseshoe because it's not a regular character you can type in. Okay, the first thing I do to construct the truth table is I write out the expression. And what I'm as a, I'm writing out the expression as a conditional actually. And I'm taking all the premises in the argument and I'm making them into a single conjunction and I'm using that conjunction as the antecedent of a conditional. And I'm taking the conclusion and making that the consequent of the conditional. And the idea here is that if I express the argument as a conditional like this, and I can show that this conditional is true in every instance, then that will show that this is a valid argument form. So after writing this down, what I do is I show all combinations of truth values between the propositions used in the argument form. And these are P, Q, and R. So we have
have three propositions. So to show all combinations between three propositions, we need uh, eight combinations. And so for P, I'm going to write down uh, T four times and F four times. The T means true, the F means false. And I do that under P here and under P here. Then for the next proposition, I do T twice, then F twice, T twice again, and F twice. And then for the last proposition, I just alternate between T and F. TF, 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 TF. And so by putting T and F under each one in different patterns, I'm showing all combinations of truth values between these propositions. So, the next thing I want to do is show which propositions are true. I'm going to start with if P, then R. That's easy to, to show. Uh, it's going to be false whenever P is true and R is false. So it's false here, it's false here, and otherwise is true. And on that basis alone, we can know that the conditional is true here, 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 and here. And we can know that because we have a true consequent. And whenever the consequent of a conditional is true, the entire conditional is going to be true. So we just have two other cases to check out where this is false. So let's look at the values of each conjunct of the conjunction here. And here we have T and we have F. So that's false. And since we have a false conjunct, we have a false conjunction. And whenever the, conjun whenever the antecedent of a conditional is false, as it is here, and the consequent is also false, then the whole conditional is true. So it's true there. And now let's go here. Here it's false, and here it's false. So that gives us a true conditional. But over here, we have a true antecedent and a false consequent. So there we have a false um, conditional. So we have a false conjunction here. And again, because we have a false antecedent and a false consequent, we have a true conditional. And so this entire conditional is true in every instance, which shows that the hypothetical syllogism is a valid argument form. In the next video, we will be looking at constructive dilemma and destructive dilemma. Thank you for watching. These are some of the sources that I referred to while making this video. Uh, Cohen's book is what I re relied on for talking about the propositions. And Kopi's book is an excellent one, which I used when I actually took symbolic logic in college. Thank you for watching, and watch out for the next video.